Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. This is the legendary Iron Man Lone Wolf run where I am trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty <coughs> with only a single soldier per mission. My name is Saiken and I must confess I have probably grinded for more than a month now just between the last run and this run. It is in-game May 9th, uh, 2038, mind you, that is uh, three and a half years into the game. And since the month in XCOM are a bit shorter than the actual month, it's a 28 uh, day cycle, we're um, pretty much like four years into the game. I've been grinding nonstop and it's getting tiring, but I want to excite you about what's going to happen because now we're going to approach the final mission and I'm going to use the intro of this video to talk a little bit about what happened and get you up to speed. In terms of research, there is no active research left over. We have completely and utterly researched everything, including all of the research breakthroughs, which is cool, that in itself, is helpful. Uh, furthermore, we have the we have probably unlocked all of the resistance orders. I mean, just look at that. Due to the covert ops, I managed to unlock all of the resistance orders. Uh, the ones that we are running with um, will be between the eyes. Doesn't matter for uh, this mission, but loss would die immediately. The ones that matter a little bit more is we have increased PCF uh, PCS effects. Uh, that uh, will give our soldier a bit more um, a bit more firepower. This will not uh, matter, but theoretically our shredding is improved. There is a potential that um, since we both have double agent and voluntary armor uh, army, that uh, both um, uh, XCOM as well as um, as double agents could join uh, the missions. I think this is only available in normal missions, though. I cannot imagine that that is going to happen in Waterworld. Anyways, psionic attacks will cause massive feedback to whoever is attacking, uh, attacking us, and the others are really more quality of uh, life. We do have a few other items uh, that have happened. So in terms of just uh, kills in the armory, you can see we wrapped up quite a bunch of kills. We were always behind the kill curve, but since over the course of the last uh, years, I've all, overall been shut down 26 times, and that is how often I defended uh, the um, adventure. That includes one time when a UFO has uh, shut me down. So it was a long, long grind, and these are essentially the killed enemies. As you can see on the left-hand side, um, since we were continuously <clears throat> raiding the enemy um, facilities, I managed to kill all three of uh, the alien rulers, not the chosen ones, um, which means we're going to go into the last mission with all three chosen alive. Uh, so we're going to battle through that. Uh, the kills here were rel relatively unspectacular. Um, Selfing in just planting the C4, and sometimes a ruler has shown up. Move, uh, we move directly onto the extraction zone, and from there it was uh, one usage of banish and basically um, uh, going out. Um, since the Reaper's banish with six shots had a 20% chance to kill with each uh, shot, we always uh, killed them immediately. Really strong combination against uh, them if you're interested. So that's where we stand in terms of uh, soldiers, and I'm going to go into that a bit more in detail. I stopped after the training of six complete magi. Uh, for those of you who are aware how long a, a fully trained uh, psi operative take on legendary difficulty, seeing that I have six, and by the way, since more than half a year, probably almost more than that, since a year I'm not even training them anymore, all of these Psy operatives have all of their abilities like completely trained through. They've never seen a single mission though, uh, zero missions. They are just there. So I figured no need to effectively continue training them. 
Um, we have a pretty full um, full roster of kernels. Uh, Dark Tower Noxus made it to kernel at the end just through a covert ops mission, so congratulations. We're going to go and look at Hogbite in a second because he's going to be the um, hero of uh, this run. In terms of essentially creating armor, we have all of the armor and all of the weapon upgrades. I'd like to show you a bit more about uh, the world after after this long time. So something weird has happened about two-ish years into the campaign. Although losing um, normal covert ops missions and of course landed UFOs and supply rates and so on, uh, the number of missions overall just declined drastically. Uh, so short of the facilities, really nothing happened. Um, facilities and shutdowns of the adventure. Um, which also meant that when once we started kind of expanding, we never lost the land. So despite the fact that we do have 14 regions, however, the economical crackdown is so intense because we lost so many missions over the course of uh, this run that we're down to 100 income. That's the first time that we have positive income, by the way, uh, since a very, very long time, which is... Yeah, not bad. It solves our supplies issue. But I can assure you we have more than enough to sell at the black market if that would be an issue. Anyways, uh, the things that are relevant for our mission are um, I expanded into Oceania to get tactical analysis, which is going to be a really important uh, benefit for us. Uh, so that's uh, that is uh, going to matter a lot. Tactical analysis essentially meaning that when we discover enemies, uh, they, they will only get one turn. The other important uh, bonus is Mental Fortitude, uh, which um, is specifically for the last mission for Waterworld, important for the Commander, Panic Obsession, Berserk, Shattered, only last one turn. A great bonus to have. Both probably the strong bo uh, strongest bonuses uh, that you can get from from the continents. Everything else is okay. Uh, really doesn't matter all too much. Um, yeah, or these are mostly instant uh, instant training spawn units. So now to the point that you all or to the to the aspect that you were all looking for. So I've been rigidly training covert ops missions non-stop ever since. And since we didn't know, uh, didn't you need to do uh, reduce avatar progress missions anymore, we could fully and 100% focus on the gains of uh, hit points and mobility, which were quite substantial. I also, uh, with increased um, PCSs, basically switched from, uh, from, um, from a agility PCS to a hit point PCS. So we were focusing only on those two stats and we were quite lucky. A lot of missions around like the five, six days mark, uh, which we could even reduce further. So let me present to you without further ado, the hero of this mission, the man who defies gravity, the man who has ascended to a higher level of, um, of a human being, the man who completely and utterly ignores time and uh, simply becomes better and better. Hogbite. Hogbite. So first and foremost, let's go through what I've uh, done here. And you will, um, by watching through the video, you're probably like, oh my gosh, Saikan, how crazy is that? And I agree, it's a little bit over the top, but whatever. We need to do what we need to do in order to complete the challenge. So these missions are only the missions that... <laughs> The three um, storyline missions and 15 uh, times where his uh, where he has um, has been ambushed um, on the covert ops mission. So we upped the health quite a bit. I wanted to go for 100, but I got so tired of grinding and we're about to be shut down again. And I really don't want to play the 27th um, defense. So I figured, eh, good enough. Um, the superior conditioning with the increased uh, with the increased PCS uh, gives uh, um, some extra health. Uh, so it's four hit points are included here, and his armor, absolutely upgraded armor, 
gives six hit points. So we're looking at 105 hit points, which, mind you, is three times as much as a sector pot um, and almost twice as much as most of the chosen ones. But he's going to use that. He's completely and utterly ignoring the time-space continuum because with 83 mobility, you're going to see this is just ludicrous. Uh, the maps are becoming a complete and utter, uh, yeah, small, small garden that he uh, casually steps through. He's just running and running and running whilst others are looking. It's hilarious. I can... I can highly recommend uh, that if you ever have too much time on your hands, um, start improving their stats. Uh, whenever we did have extra time, also did some aim, but that's really not uh, the point. Um, the dodge caps at 100. In some of the cases, I needed to do missions uh, that had dodge as a, as a reward because, uh, due to other reasons. Uh, so that's how he ended up with a bit more than 100 dodge. Personal combat sim, like we said, uh, conditioning. Uh, his soldier bond is uh, with uh, Dark Tower Naxos, so nothing special here. We're going to go in with his standard armor, Celestial Gauntlets. Uh, they are max, uh, fully upgraded. Unfortunately, the gauntlets themselves only can get one upgrade from plasma weapons, and that's pretty much it. They don't get a separate upgrade, which is a shame, but yeah. Uh, can't can't change that. Um, he's immune uh, to a lot of things uh, through mind shield, stun panic, mind control, and uh, all of the chosen uh, mind abilities. As for his soldier abilities, we have completely and utterly um, sk uh, skilled everything, uh, including sustenance, blade storm, and fortress. So that's going to hopefully help him even further. He Pretty much is, is um, at this point hard, if not completely unkillable for a single enemy. We do have a 100% chance to parry for one shot. We afterwards do have a 50% chance to reflect. We then have a 60% chance to deflect. Then we do have a 100% chance to only take half damage. And then one armor is being deducted. So that's the physical component. He's completely immune to acid, fire, um, ice, uh, poison, you name it. Complete immunity. He's furthermore immune to explosions, which means the only way for him to really lose uh, this armor is being shredded. And that is due to a sector port shot or due to the shot of an Andromedon. Everything else does not uh, shred him. So that armor has a pretty high chance of continuing to stay there. Um, yeah, so he's furthermore immune, immune to most of the mind effects and status effects. The only things that can affect him are, number one, what you need to look out for, stasis, uh, which will uh, continue to affect him. So the uh, priests are a high target. We can't end our turn next to a viper because the vipers bind. Um, unfortunately, cannot be parried. Not when you are next to the viper. And uh, third, um, thirdly, um, we need to uh, be careful um, for uh, for specters. So far, I've, I'm pretty positive that the mind shield completely nullifies their ability to shadow melt. But I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't a hundred percent rely on that. So uh, that's that that piece might be a little bit fishy as well. Things to consider as well uh, that can damage us despite of all our defenses. Um, Sectopods lightning fields, as you have seen in some of the other videos, will deal uh, solid damage. So that's going to be nine damage. Um, and the chosen, the chosen assassin, her sword is going to still deal damage. Whew, that's 15 minutes of introduction, but I felt uh, the last month of gaming. I quite literally sank more than 200 hours just into that campaign. Um, if that's even enough, probably more than that. Um, so I felt I wanted to share with you uh, what has happened. And now we're jumping into the actual mission, which is funnily enough going to be rather trivial, the first one. So if we're looking at the... Um, at the network tower, yep, let's get some concealment. 
Let's get immunity to uh, some, sh uh, some shots. We don't need squad side. Uh, might as well get some extra uh, some extra reflexes. And there we go. We're it's now time for all or nothing, just like Bradford said. From here on, there's no backing up. Look at that. I am pretty sure this here is not, no longer take a, um, um, keeping track of his actual health uh, hit points. Hilarious. Good. Let's take a look and see how well Hogbite is going to do on this fine mission. And here we go. Well, well, well. 105 hit points. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. Imagine if I wouldn't have numeric displays. Like he would have rows upon rows upon rows. So one of the things to consider when you can walk that far is you can move and move and move and move. And eventually move like really 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 far yep and he runs continues to run <laughs> he directly start uh, engaging a pack And there we go. That's one hit. Probably two overwatches. Yeah, figured. So we have immunity to two of their shots. And I'm pretty sure that one of the mechs is going to use its rockets. Interesting, I thought that we had immunities. I paid Intel for it. Well, we lost two hit points, so not the end of the world. We're going to get them back on the last mission. There we go. <laughs> Easy enough. And here we are, right in the last mission. Time for Water World. We got the Commander's Avatar, one thing that isn't allowed to die, and we got Hogbite. <clears throat> 103 hit points, the heavy gorilla of uh, this of this map so i am thinking about trying to somewhat guess where the aliens are maybe we'll get a few a few attacks off of him so what i'm currently trying to do is make sense of where the aliens are located I would say they're probably not within that first uh, building. So what we would need to do is get behind it. The question is how much further behind it. This here is the way down. Yeah, this here looks like there would be aliens. Yep, 
Oh, it's most likely most likely going to be here. Not hundred percent sure, but we're going to find out. Hawkbite is going to scout. Uh, that was not successful. <laughs> not very much. Oh, well. I was right. Gotta be careful with the sector port. Good. So we have plenty of movement. That's not going to be an issue. Let's make sure we hit his uh, him real hard. I think we just triggered, by the way, another pack. They are not a problem, or well, they shouldn't be a problem. Good, and since all of them have tactical analysis, might as well move back. And whilst we're doing that, it's time for the commander to go just a tiny bit closer and I'd like to clean up the majority of this room. Codices are anyways going to find us so they will teleport in. This here will simply create a more open field Interesting. The even psionic bomb is considered a psionic attack, hence it's creating a feedback. We triggered quite a few enemies, so let's try to clean them up one after the other. Uh, it's getting better and better. She certainly um, is going to cause a problem. Let's see if we can spot her out. It's an advantage to get rid of all of the cover. All right, she's here. I mean, we could theoretically go into full cover, right? And then keep going. But I think instead, simply going to move the commander back. There's no point in fighting here. Hmm. Double-edged sword, let me think about it. I mean, we definitely want to get the chosen kind of ASAP. So let's move into here. can still decide whom we're going to attack. Codices uh, are a bit of an issue. So 
So. The, the assassin is by far some, the most threatening enemy here. Might as well want to focus on her first. And she has a lot of movement, so we can't just outmaneuver her. This, on the other hand, could be also an option. Let's double check her information again. She takes increased damage from Templars. And increased damage from close range, which both of uh, that would be true for us. I think we're going for her. Problem is definitely the amount of armor. And we're we are only at one focus, so we gotta get more focus. I changed my mind. We're taking both of them. Number one to to upgrade the focus. Now we're at full focus, number two, because I think we can deal with the... Ch I do have an idea how to deal with the Chosen. So we're moving further back. Kava doesn't really matter against the Chosen. She will hit us anyways. The Commander can take a single hit, that's not the problem. And this here should take care of the Codex. There we go. So we're only having one Codex left. Now, from next round onwards, I'd like to focus on the Assassin. Unfortunately, the Assassin doesn't have tactical analysis first, which is a bit of an issue. If she had, uh, so if she would be reduced to one action in the first round, it wouldn't be as much of a problem. Her movement is definitely enough to reach the commander. Oh, I stand corrected. She's affected by it as well. Interesting. Reload. I mean, we could mind control it. Gives us the teleport ability. Good. So in terms of the chosen, like where if I'd be a chosen, where would I hide myself? She's usually trying to get closer. Could be anywhere here really. We want to go in deep enough so that we can attack something back here. Yeah, it's a guessing game. Vanishing winds teleports her anywhere. She could might as well be over here. You, we wouldn't know that. She certainly isn't here. That's the only thing that's that's a given. Moving deeper in, let's get the sector port. And we found her.
Good, let's see how much damage we're going to deal to her. Eh, not quite as much as I was hoping we would deal. But yeah, we can't, we... We need to f continue focusing on to her. She's she's by far going to deal the most damage. All right, so much for our codex. It acted as a meat shield. We do have an issue with the uh, with the sector port here as well. So sector port plus chosen is a really nasty combination. Cho uh, the sector port has more armor. So it takes less damage overall. Similar amount of hit points. We still need to focus on the Chosen. Harbor Wave is not a big problem. Hmm. Let me think about that. I was for a moment considering if we exchange ourselves with with one of uh, them, but they are immune to exchange. Too heavy, can't hit them. I'd like to hit the Chosen and the Sector Pod. We could do that this way, but the Sector Pod is only going to take 6 points of damage, which is almost neglectable. Gotta focus on the Chosen first. Unfortunately... Chosen is a pretty tough cookie. You can't just kill it. Let's continue harassing her. That's a critical hit. We can't tank both of them. That's too much. These are the only two that can deal straight up damage to us with and bypass our our parry. Elsewise I would simply go and essentially hit them. Alright. We have kind of maneuvered us into into a corner here. And one of our biggest weaknesses is our inability to deal with um, with armor. We don't have a great great amount of shredding. Okay, what we can do still is the good old dimensional rift.
That removes the overwatch. Yeah, might as well continue harassing the sector pod. Every little bit of damage counts. We are in full cover. This here will hit both of them. Just out of curiosity, we can amplify the damage, and we should do so. It's not gonna end our turn. Good. We're back to full uh, to full focus. She's down to 16. She's going to take another hit. And let's position ourselves over here. That way we're the more attractive target for her to simply charge in. Still in half cover, that's good enough. Nice. That reflect also shreds his own armor. Beautiful. Perfect. Wrath Cannon does not deal damage instantly. Yeah, those two are not a problem. Uh, Sectorport is a bit of a problem. Yeah, and they are a problem as well. We're being pretty much overrun. But luckily many of them position within the field. And there is the blade storm. Can we kill her? Nah, not quite. Going to take a hit. And it's a crit for 12 points of damage. Ouch. Well, well. Commander would trigger one overwatch of her. She hits quite hard. But misses. Beautiful. And I figured he wouldn't hit. The commander re regenerates his hit points, so that's not the end of the world. This here could be a kill. Just need to hit. Fortunately, misses. Okay, hmm. Well. We are in a bit of a tough spot here. Definitely want to get out of the Wrath Cannon. And we got to deal with the Chosen first. This here will kill her. Perfect. We could position ourselves here. And 
and therefore protect the commander. That'll be two bladestorm attacks for them. We don't have a uh, great parry, so we're going to just need to soak it up. There is no way around it. There is no way around it. Templar needs to tank now. Maybe one of them decides to do blazing pinions. Definitely need to take care of the sector port next. Yeah, I'm not terribly afraid about them. All right, that's one down, uh, one hit. We have to heal this. We need to be in pristine condition if we're going into the final room. This here is just a warm up. Fortunately, we're taking quite a bit of damage. One reason for that is we do have nowhere to go. All right, the commander has regenerated five hit points. I would love the same ability on uh, Hogbite. Unfortunately, that's not the case, but we can use Void Conduit. We're going to get back eight hit points. Okay, we're soft. We could soften up uh, the sector port, or essentially kill the Andromedon shell. Archon is an option as well. If we were to hit it, um, it would definitely die. I think we're going to go with the Archon. Yep. Good. The both of the Archons are going to be dead. They just don't know it yet the shell yeah we have we don't really have a counterplay for it and the sector port is hopefully going to miss wrath cannon wrath cannon almost well There we go. We're back to full focus. Yeah, we're going to hit him once. Basically, this here we can't do anything against it hitting us. Oh, it destroyed our full cover. Are we going to mind control the shield bearer? It's not a bad idea. We can give ourselves temporary hit points. Amplifying on the sector pot. Yeah, 
And this is not going to kill him, not quite. Down to one. You could be tempted to simply stay here and parry. The problem with that is lightning field is unfortunately damaging. We learned that before the blade storm hits, which is a sole exception. I know no other ability that does that. So we're instead going to go here and hope that it moves and our overwatch hopefully hits the sector port. Could have always positioned ourselves here, to be honest. Well, fuck it. Well, we were lucky. Close call at the end. We're back to 90 hit points, so fifth minus 15 compared to where we originally started. He already used his energy shield. Lamentable. Might as well use him to trigger the overwatch. And finally get rid of the sector pod. Moving up, reload, overwatch. And I think that's a good moment in time where I could end the first um, part of the series. I'm pretty sure I it'll take just a little bit longer to, to do the last mission and I'm not sure yet how well we're going to do. Keep in mind we only killed one Chosen so far. There's going to be um, two additional ones and I hope that the Warlock who is immune to melee is not going to be in the final room. Because that would really suck. We can't get rid of him, uh, at least not quickly enough, so we would need to ignore him the entire fight. Mm. The assassin was a dangerous foe, so it's good that uh, we got her down first. But there are still many, many uh, more enemies to come. I thank you for watching, and if you are as excited as I am, uh, or even if you just recognize uh, this um, very extraordinary um, idea of a campaign, hit a like and a comment down below to um, push the video on YouTube so that others can enjoy it as well. Thank you and see you in the next episode.